Hello and welcome to the first exercise on my C, C++ tutorial series. So in the last videos we have implemented this simple main function. And before we're gonna continue on with like memory layout pointers and all of that a bit more advanced stuff, I want to give you an exercise that you can do to basically get yourself ready to do that. So what I would recommend is that you get a fresh new copy uh, of that code here. You can do this either by downloading this via GitHub. So if you go to the GitHub repository you can see that we have this new directory that I just added here, this exercises directory. And in this exercises directory, you're going to have multiple exercises in the future. Currently, there's just one. This is why it's also looking like that. In the future, it might look something like that. If you go into the exercise directory and you then going to go in here and down here, you're going to find everything that you need for this exercise. So what I would recommend is that you download a full copy of that full source code. You can do this by just downloading the zip here. Or what you can also do is you can download a full separate copy. I'm going to do this now to show you how you can do this. You can just go to HTTPS and copy that by clicking on here. And I'm going to put this now into a different location so that you can, so that in the future I can also show you how to update this as soon as the, your local copy gets outdated. So in my case, I'm going to go to my documents. I'm just going to create a new folder here in my documents. I'm just going to call this temp because I'm going to delete this in the future. And inside of this temp field folder, I am going to type in git clone, just a normal CMD. I, if you don't have seen that, I can click in here and type in CMD. It's going to open up the CMD. And what you want to type in is git clone. And then you want to control V paste in the link that you just copied. And then it's just very simply going to copy the full tutorial in here. So you have this new folder and inside of that, you have that solution, the Visual Studio solution. And you can double click this to open up the solution as I have it here. So if you double click it, it's going to be probably look something like that if you start it or like that. And what you then want to do is you want to make sure that you probably set up the exercise before you start taking a look at it. You want to uh, select this folder exercises and you can open up this folder and inside of this folder there are going to be all exercises nicely ordered and you're going to click the exercise that you want to do. In our case here it's the E01 functions. You can open this up and now I can see the, the content in here. The first file that I can see is the E01.c file which is the backend code which is basically how the backend of this uh, exercise works. You don't need to understand this, but of course you can take a look at this. Another thing that you're going to find is my functions.c. The functions.c is the file where you're going to work in. You're going to find the instructions inside of that. It's named the same than the project. So uh, e01functions, function.c, named the same. And you're going to find the whole... Um, the whole uh, introduction to that and what you need to do as well as a few hints if you are not able to get forward to find a few informations on that. You're also going to find my what, what is provided by the e01.c file. This is basically what the C file is going to implement and provide and that you need to use. You're going to find some space to implement or declare your own functions and to implement your own functions and you of course also going to find a main that you need to populate to test everything. Before you're going to start with that, you want to make sure that you set this up as a startup project because by default you can see that the 01 simple C app is highlighted. It's kind of like bold. The C01 functions, it's not bold, but the simple C app is bold. And this means that if you click on the local Windows debugger here, it's going to start the C01 simple C app. But we don't want to have this. We now want to uh, start our E01 functions project. So you want to click the project, right click on here and select set as startup project. Now you can see that the E01 functions gets highlighted and the simple C app is no longer highlighted or bold. And what this means is that if I now click on local Windows debugger, it is going to start our newly created um, uh, exercise, which is not outputting anything because, well, the empty uh, main function speaks for its own. It's not doing anything. So if I would, I simply add a printf here. So hello from the exercise or something like that and press a five again, you would get the hello from the exercise. So you can see it's working. Let's delete this again because I don't need this. So this is basically how you set up your newly uh, cloned example. And what you now want to do is you want to take a look at the um, introduction. I'm always going to have two videos on these. I'm going to have one video where I'm going to explain how everything works. And I'm also going to have a second video, which is basically going to uh, have is uh, going to have the solution. The second video is always going to be uploaded uh, unlisted to YouTube. And you're going to always find at the end of the video, you're going to find the, the link and maybe also in the video description, probably also in the video description, you're going to find the link to the video where I'm going to solve 
what the exercise was. So basically I'm always going to upload these directly, these videos, there are no time delay between of them because you want to make sure that you have the solution available right at the beginning. All right, so what is the thing that we want to do? So how is that example about? So um, here you need to implement sending over a serial interface. A serial interface could be anything on the system, any interface where you can serially send data out of your computer. So for example, if you communicate with an Arduino or any other system, you're going to use a serial interface. If you have a USB stick, you are also communicating over a, over a serial interface, so called USB, universal uh, serial bus, which is a bit more different. It's a bus so you can connect multiple devices and not just an interface bus means multiple devices interface means one-to-one -one basically and USB is basically just a very complicated protocol while our serial interface is going to be very simple and the given functions that I have implemented in the E01, the given functions here emulate a serial interface. So you're not really talking to a proper serial interface that is sending data out and you don't need a device that is connected. It's just going to be a sync and uh, it's not really doing anything with the data you sent. It's just going to print something to the console so they can see that it's working. It's kind of like emulating the interface. Now, one important thing about a serial interface is always how wide the data is. And in our serial interface, uh, 16 bits are sent at a time. And each 16-bit word, so each 16 bits of data, is accompanied with a single parity bit. The parity bit is used uh, when sending over serial interfaces to make sure that the data is correct, so you can detect a single bit error. So a parity bit uh, just allows to detect for one error in all 16-bit words. So if there is... Uh, we have 16 bits. If there is one bit is bad, we can detect the error by looking at this parity bit. If two bits are bad, then we might not be able to detect it, or we're not going to be able to detect this. If we have three, we would be again able to detect it, but basically parity bits are just used to detect one single bit error, and this is not why they are not that good, but in our case they are fine to, to use. So uh, let's take a look at this. How can this parity bit be computed? So to compute the uh, parity bit from a given 16-bit word, you need to do two steps. The first step is that you need to count the bits set in the 16-bit data word. So basically uh, count how many bits are set. And according to how many bits are set, the parity bit is going to be 0 or 1. So it's going to be 0 when the bits are even. So if we have 0 bits set, 2 bits sets, 4 bits sets, uh, 6 bits sets, 8 bit set 10 12 14 16 then this parity bit is going to be zero because well yeah it's it's an even number of uh, bits that are one if we have an odd number of bits that are one so one three five seven uh, nine eleven thirteen or fifteen then the parity bit should be one Another important interface of, uh, imp information about the serial interface is that the serial interface must be started with serial begin and stopped with serial end. And your task is to send the following data over the serial interface. You should send 0xFFF, 0x1234, 0x5678, 0x9ABC, 0xDEF0, and then again at the end 0x0000. And uh, you should at least use one function, and if you do it correctly or normally, like anybody else would do it, you would use exactly one function. So that's your task. Here you can like declare your functions, similar to what I did here. Here you can implement your main, and here you can implement your functions, and you should be good to go. So have fun implementing these functions. Mm -hmm.